In this video, we're going to look at Pythagoras' theorem, which relates the lengths of the three sides of a right-angled triangle. And it is important to point that out. It only applies to right-angled triangles. And as I mentioned in the previous video, triangles are incredibly useful geometric constructions for solving a huge variety of problems. Pythagoras' theorem is a particularly helpful tool when we're working with triangles, so you're going to find that it crops up time and time again. For example, in this video, we're going to use it to calculate the distance between two points. In the next video, we're going to use it to calculate the area of an isosceles triangle. So whilst it's a very simple theory, it is incredibly powerful, and it's definitely an important tool in your mathematical tool belt. So in the previous video, we discussed right-angled triangles. So I'm going to go ahead and draw another right-angled triangle on the whiteboard. So I'm going to start off with a horizontal line and a vertical line, just so I know that they are at a right angle to each other. We can connect those together. And then I'm going to bring up my other layer so that I can draw on this. We know that this angle is a right angle. Now, in almost all texts that relate to Pythagoras' theorem, the edges of the right angle triangle are named as follows. The hypotenuse, the edge that sits opposite our right angle and the edge that is the longest edge of that right angle triangle is named C. And the other two edges are named A and B. Now, these names really are arbitrary. And once you understand Pythagoras' theorem, you're going to see that it doesn't matter what we name the edges. All that matters is the relationship between the edges. And Pythagoras' theorem states that the length of our hypotenuse, the length of the longest edge, is related to the lengths of our other two edges. And it's related using the following formula. He stated that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. This is Pythagoras' theorem. It's a very, very simple formula, and it's a very easy formula to remember, which is great because we use it so often that it's very good to be able to just remember, oh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, again, c is the hypotenuse. A and B are the other two edges of the triangle. So it's important that the other two edges of the triangle, their length squared and added together, is equal to the hypotenuse, the edge that sits opposite our right angle, is equal to the length of that edge squared. So let's take a look at how we can apply this theory to calculate the length of an unknown edge in a right angle triangle. Well, let's suppose that A equals 3 and B equals 4 in this case. I know that on the diagram, this edge is a lot longer than this edge, but don't worry about that. We'll just say that A equals 3 and B equals 4. Well, how do we calculate the length of C? Well, we know that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So therefore, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, obviously. And C, therefore, is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. So if we were to put our values in. That means that c is equal to the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which means that c is equal to the square root of 9 plus 16. c is equal to the square root of 25. And we saw earlier that we can get two values for the square root of a positive number. So in this case, the square root of 25 is either going to be positive 5 plus 5 or minus 5. However, we're dealing with the length of an edge of a triangle here, which we know must be positive. When we're measuring the length of something, we always use a positive value. Thus, we're only ever going to take the positive value from this square root, not the positive or negative, only the positive value, which means in this case that Pythagoras' theorem informs us the hypotenuse of a triangle where one of the edges is 3 and the other edge it's 4, has a length of 5. So let's try a slightly different example. Suppose that we knew that our hypotenuse was 10 units long and that one of the other sides of the triangle, just for argument's sake, let's say A, was 6 units long. How do we calculate the length of our unknown side, B? Well, we've seen that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Therefore, B squared would be equal to c squared minus a squared 
b would be equal to the square root of c squared minus a squared. We can plug our numbers in. So b is equal to the square root of 10 squared minus 6 squared. b is equal to the square root of 100 minus 36, which means that b is equal to the square root of 64. Again, the square root of 64 is either plus 8 or minus 8, but we only take the positive value since the length must be positive. Therefore, b is equal to 8. So whilst this is very useful for working out the lengths of sides on a right angled triangle, Pythagoras' theorem is actually even more useful for finding the distance between two points. So I'm going to bring up a new layer. Fantastic. Fantastic. And let's say we have two points. So I'm going to draw a real quick set of Cartesian axes. And let's say I had a point at 1, 1, and another point at 3, 2. So let's try and keep this to some scale, even if I don't indicate the scale. So we have these two points. How are we going to find the distance between these points using Pythagoras' theorem? Well, we can construct a right angled triangle using those two points. The hypotenuse of the triangle is the line that connects those two points. One of the other edges is a line that runs parallel to the x-axis. And the final edge is a line that runs parallel to the y-axis. And we know, therefore, because the x-axis is perpendicular to the y-axis, we know that this is a right angle. Now, because of the coordinates of our points, we can find the length of this edge and the length of this edge and that will allow us, using Pythagoras, to determine the length of the edge which runs between our points, thus telling us the distance between those points. So let's have a look at the length of this bottom edge. It runs parallel in x, so it's telling us the distance that we need to travel, so to speak, from one point to the other point in x. In this example, we're going to take our end point, which has an x of 3, and we're going to subtract our start point, which has an x of of 1, which tells us we must travel 2 units, because if we start at 1 and travel 2 units, we're going to get 3. Likewise, if we start at 1 and we travel 1 unit, we're going to get 2, and that's calculated by taking 2 and subtracting 1 from it. So one of our edges of the triangle is 2, the other edge is 1. So if we were to say that this is A and this is B, then we can work out the length of this edge, our hypotenuse, which we know is the distance between the points using Pythagoras. So we've already seen that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. C is therefore equal to the root of A squared plus B squared. Therefore, C is equal to the root of, we said A was 2, B was 1. C is therefore equal to the root of 4 plus 1. C is equal to the root of 5. Now, the root of 5 is not a nice whole number, so I'm going to simply leave it written as the square root of 5. It's perfectly fine when we're working on paper to leave it in this form because this form tells us explicitly what that value is, and it actually tells us much more accurately than if we were to evaluate this and then just write just some of the decimal places. So I'm going to leave it in this form. So because we're squaring the length of the bottom and we're squaring the length of the side of the edge, it actually doesn't matter which way round we subtract one set of coordinates from the other. For example, if I was to say, OK, let's take this point and subtract that other point from it, well, what's going to happen there? Well, if we were to take 1 in x and subtract 3 from it, we'd get minus 2. If we were to take 1 in y and subtract 2 from it, we'd get minus 1. But because when we plot them into this equation, we square them, minus 2 squared is still equal to 4, minus 1 squared is still equal to 1, we get the exact same values going in. So because we're squaring them here, it doesn't matter which order we take our points in, we're still going to get the same 
distance. And we can actually extend this idea into a general form that's going to give us an incredibly useful equation. So let's say that the coordinates of our points that we're trying to find the distance between are x1, y1, and x2, y2. We've seen that to get the distance between these two points, we need to take the distance in x squared my, uh, added to the distance in y squared and take the square root of that. Again, it's the distance in x squared added to the distance in y squared and take the square root of that. So a, in this case, the distance in x, we know we could take x2 and subtract x1 and we would get the distance in x. b, which is our distance in y, we know we'd take y2 and subtract y1. Therefore, if c is equal to the root of a squared plus b squared, then we could say that c is equal to the root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And as we saw, that this is equal to our distance. So we could say distance is equal to the root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And this is actually when you may hear people referring to the distance formula. Well, in 2D, this is exactly what they're referring to. This is the distance formula. And it's so very simple and simply just derived entirely from Pythagoras' theorem. So now when someone says, oh, I'm using the distance formula, or if you're trying to find a distance formula, now you not only understand how this formula can be used to find the distance, but also where it comes from. It simply comes from Pythagoras' theorem that states that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and it uses a right-angled triangle constructed from those two points in order to apply Pythagoras' theorem to find the distance. So this is our distance theorem, or distance theory, and it's incredibly, incredibly useful when we're working in computer graphics. So now that we've covered all of the theory for this lesson, I do want to set some questions for you to work through. So I'm going to bring up a new whiteboard really quick. There we go. And let's set the first question. So the question one, I want you to find the length of the hypotenuse of a right angled triangle given that the other two edges have lengths of 5 units and 8 units. So we're going to say that A is equal to 5, B is equal to 8, and I want you to find the length of the hypotenuse. So go ahead and pause the video, give this a go. If you get the answer or if you get stuck, unpause and I will work through the solution. All right, welcome back. So this is quite simple. We're going to use Pythagoras' theorem that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We're going to rearrange that to find c. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. c equals the root of a squared plus b squared. We can then plug our numbers into that. So c is equal to the root of 5 squared plus a squared. c is equal to the root of 25 plus 64. Therefore, c is equal to the square root of 89. Now, the square root of 89 isn't a nice round number, but in case some of you used a calculator to work this out as opposed to writing this out on paper and you wanted to check, well, did you get the correct answer? The square root of 89 is approximately equal to 9.4. Three, four. So as long as you've got either square root of 89 written like so, or some value that's approximately 9.434, then you've got the correct value. So that's question one. Let's take a look now at another question. So question two. So in this case, I want you to find the length of the base of a right angled triangle, which has a hypotenuse that is 10 units long, and a side of five units long. So find the length of the other remaining side. So go ahead and pause the video, find that length. If you find it or if you get stuck, unpause and I will work through the solution. Okay, welcome back. 
So again, we're using Pythagoras, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, but in this case, I want to find b squared. So b squared is equal to c squared minus a squared. b is equal to the root of c squared minus a squared. Therefore, b is equal to the root of c is 10 squared minus a is 5 squared. b is equal to the root of 100 minus 25, which means that b is equal to the square root of 75. Now again, just as in the previous question, the square root of 75 isn't a nice round number, but in case you did use a calculator to get that value, you want to check you got the right answer. This is approximately equal to 8.660. So as long as you got on paper the root of 75 or used a calculator and got 8.660 or thereabouts, you got the solution correctly. You worked through this correctly. So I do have another question that I'd like to ask. This is going to be a distance question this time rather than a directly triangle question. So this question is to find the distance between two points which have the coordinates 4, 4 and 7, 8. So go ahead and pause the video, find the distance between those two points. When you come back, I'm going to work through the solution of this question. OK, welcome back, everyone. So this is going to be using our distance formula. And our distance formula is that distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1, all squared, plus y2 minus y1, all squared. Now, in terms of which point is x1 and y1, and which point is x2, y2, it doesn't matter. We've seen that it doesn't matter. So I'm arbitrarily going to say that this point is x1, y1, and this point is x2, y2. If you've got a different uh, order there for the points, you should still very clearly be able to see the working that I'm going through and check that you get the same answer in the end. So the distance, which I'm now going to just simplify to d, but I am effectively saying distance, is equal to the square root of x2, which is 7, minus x1 is 4, squared, plus y2 is 8, minus y1 is 4, squared. So distance is equal to the root of 7 minus 4 is 3, squared, plus 8 minus 4 is 4, squared. So distance is equal to the root of 9 plus 16. Therefore, the distance is equal to the root of 25. And therefore, the distance, which will be positive, just as when we were working out the length of an edge, distance is positive. So it's just going to be that one value, and that is positive 5. So the distance between the points, let's scroll back up, the point 4, 4, and the point 7, 8 is five units. So to sum up, we saw that Pythagoras's theorem, as I jump back to an earlier layer, there we go, there we go, we saw Pythagoras's theorem relates the lengths of the three sides of a right angled triangle such that, whoa, let's hide out that layer, thank you very much, such that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where, wow, <laughs> craziness, where a and b are the two sides that aren't the hypotenuse, c is the side that is the hypotenuse. So because of all the craziness, just to recap again, Pythagoras' theorem states that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse of our triangle, that is the edge that is opposite our right angle, a and b are the other two edges. We also saw how Pythagoras' theorem can be applied to find the distance between two points. And we saw that that gives us this distance 
formula and that's incredibly useful to us but really in this video we've barely scratched the surface of just how useful Pythagoras's theorem is in problem solving it really is such an incredibly useful formula and it's so easy as well that it really is worth remembering that one just straight off the top of your head being able to recall that a squared plus b squared equals c squared of course the important fact being that c is the hypotenuse of the triangle so with that that's going to conclude this video thanks a lot for watching everyone